गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट मार्कशिया विच इज इंक्लूडेड इन क्लास हिपैटिक ऑक्सीडा सो हियर इज द थैल स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ ए मार्कशिया दिस इज द आर्चिगोनियो फोर एंड ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज अ फीमेल थैलस एंड दिस इज एंथ्रेडियो फोर कॉल्ड एज अ मेल थैलस हियर इज द वेजिटेटिव स्ट्रक्चर और अ थैल थैलस लैमिना ऑफ ए मार्कशिया विच शोज अ गिमा कप हियर इज द आर्चिगोनियो फोर एंड एंड एंथ्रेडियो फोर वेन वी आर टेकिंग ट्रांसफर सेक्शन थ्रू द थैलस ऑफ ए मार्कशिया एट दैट टाइम वी वील गेट सच टाइप ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर दिस इज द एक्चुअल क्रॉस सेक्शन और ट्रांसफर सेक्शन थ्रू द थैलस ऑफ अ मार्कशिया विच शोज अ फोटोसिंथेटिक जोन दिस इज अ लार्ज स्टोरेज जोन एंड दीज आर द राइजॉइड्स एंड दीज आर द स्केल्स एंड दिस वन इज द कंप्लीट डायग्रामेटिक रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ अ मार्कशिया लाइफ साइकल सो वी स्टार्ट विथ द क्लासिफिकेशन दिस मार्कशिया जीनस मार्कशिया इज इंक्लूडेड इन जी डिविजन ब्रायोफाइटा देन क्लासिफाइड इन टू क्लास हिपैटिकॉपसिडा इंक्लूडेड इन ऑर्डर मार्कशियल्स एंड द फैमिली इज मार्कशियसी and the genus called as a marcantia the genus marcantia comprises about 65 species worldwide distribution and is mainly confined to the temperate cool zones and grow in moist cool and shady places 11 species of marcantia have been reported from india and mainly grow growing in the himalaya very few species occur in plains and hills of this common species are marcantia polymorpha marcantia nepalentus and marcantia palmetti in this video lecture we will discuss about the gametophytic phase then reproduction in a marcantia after fertilization whatever development is called as a sporophytic phase which are the three phases of a life cycle of marcantia so first phase called as a gametophytic phase of a marcantia within that we can learn about a external feature of a gametophyte the plant body of a gametophyte is called as a thallus or thalloid which is flat prostate plagiotrophic 2 to 10 cm long and dichotomously branched so all the details are mentioned over here within this diagram diagrams then dorsal surface is a dark and green in color it has a conspicuous midrib and number of polygonal areas called as a areoli the midrib is marked marked on the dorsal surface by a shallow groove and on the ventral surface with a low ridge means in a triangular shape each polygonal area represent underlying air chambers the boundaries of this area represent wall that separate each air chamber from the next each air chamber has central pore the midrib ends in a depression at the apical region forming an apical notch which is growing point is situated first of all dorsal surface is nothing but an surface which is always facing towards the sunlight and the ventral surface is always anchor the soil surface dorsal surface also bears vegetative and sexual reproductive structure the vegetative reproductive structure called as a gima cup which is developed along the midrib these are the crescent shape with spiny fibrate margins and are about 1/8 of a inch in diameter the sexual reproductive structure are born on special stalk structure called as a gametophores or gametogeophores the gametophores bearing archegonia called as a archegoniophores while the uh, that bearing anthridia are called as a anthridiophores 
so here is the dorsal view of a marchensia that is diagram a diagram b also showing a dorsal view of a marchensia so within that at the central location there is a presence of a main midrib on that main midrib there is a development of a gimma cup and at the terminal end of each and every thallus there is a presence of a apical notch that is nothing but an a dichotomous branching rather than this one polygonal areas are also found on dorsal surface the diagram c is showing a ventral surface of a thallus so ventral surface is re represented by the ligulate scales which are thick and multicellular in nature then appendiculate scales and two types of a rhizoids that is smooth walled rhizoids and tuberculated rhizoids here is the appendages which are found in a ventral surface so come towards the ventral surface of the thallus which bear scales and rhizoids along the midrib scales are violet colored and multicellular one cell thick and arranged in two to four rows the scales are of two types simple which is also called as a ligulate scale and appendiculate scale appendiculate scale form the from form the near row of the scales close to the midrib ligulate scale form the outer or a marginal row and are smaller than the appendiculate scales rhizoids are unicellular branch and develop as a prolongation of a lower epidermal cells they are of two types smooth walled rhizoids and tuberculate rhizoids in smooth walled rhizoids both the inner and outer wall layers are fully stretched while the tuberculate rhizoids appear like a circular dots in surface view which are shown in previous diagram the inner wall layer modifies into peg like in growth which project into the cell lumen the main function of the rhizoids is to anchor the thallus on the substratum and absorb water and minerals for the nutrition purpose that is the most important function of a rhizoids here is the anatomical structure of a gametophyte a vertical cross section when we are taking a vertical cross section through the thallus it can be differentiated into photosynthetic zone which is the uppermost zone and the lower storage zone which is made up of by the parent gametous cell so this one is the diagrammatic representation this is the actual arrangement of the cells and this is the complete surface and surface view with a transfer section so within a diagrammatic representation this is the photosynthetic region and this one is the storage region below that there is a presence of scales and rhizoids for the anchor anchorage purpose then these are the cell actual cell arrangement within this these are the photosynthetic zone and these are the chambers and these chambers are get separated with the help of four to five cells cell partition and in between them there is a presence of a photosynthetic filament which are filled with the presence of a chlorophyll these are the air pore as like a uh, stomata and these are the upper epidermal protective layer this one is the storage zone which have possesses parent gametous cells which are pentagonal to hexagonal in uh, shape and that's why there is a presence of minimum inter intercellular spaces some cells are filled with uh, oil cells some cells are filled with the mucilage cell these are the reticulate thickenings and on the lower epidermis some cells become as like a rhizoids and some cells become as like a scaly this is the complete surface view of the thallus with a main midrib 
and Arioli Air Force and on this is the side view which represent the photosynthetic zone and storage zone and on the lower surface these are the scales which are protective in nature and the this one is the tuberculate rhizoids this one is the tuberculate rhizoids and this one is the smooth rhizoids upper photosynthetic zone is the outermost layer of upper epidermis its cells are thin walled square rate uh, compactly arranged and contain few chloroplasts it continuously conti it's continue broken by the presence of many barrel shaped air pores each pore is surrounded by the uh, 4 to 8 superimposed tires of a concentric ring with 3 to 4 cells in each tire air pores are compound in nature the lower tire consists of four cells which project in the pore and the opening of the pore look like star in the surface view the walls of the air pore lie half below and half above the epidermis just below the upper epidermis photosynthetic chambers are repre uh, are present in a horizontal layer each air pore open inside the air chamber and helps in the exchange of gases during the photosynthesis as like a transpiration these are the chambers <coughs> develop cytogenous cavity which is vocalized separation for the cell to form a cavity and are separated from the each other by single layer partition wall <coughs> the partition wall are of 2 to 4 cell in height cell contain chloroplast many simple or branched photosynthetic filaments arise from the base of the air chambers and they are participate in the photosynthesis below that there is a presence of a storage zone it lies just below the air chambers it is more thick and in the center and gradually tapers towards the margin it consists of several layers of compactly arranged thin wall parenchymatous isodiametric cells intercellular spaces are absent because the storage zone possesses a parenchymatous cells which are pentagonal to hexagonal and compactly arranged that's why they are devoid of any intercellular spaces but within that some cells contain oil storage and some cells are get filled with the mucilage the cells of the midrib region possesses reticulate thickening the lower most cell layer of the zone forms the lower epidermis some cell of the middle layer of the lower epidermis extend to form both types of uh, scales and rhizoids which are mentioned in diagram then come toward the reproduction in marchantia marchantia reproduced by the vegetative and sexual method vegetative reproduction is take place by the three ways first that is the formation of a gimme second that is uh, fragmentation and third that is by the adventitious branches so in case of uh, vegetative reproduction gimme are produced in the gimma cup which are found on the dorsal surface of the thallus gimma cups are the crescent shaped 3 mm in diameter with smooth spiny fabricate margins when we are taking a vertical section which are passing through the gimma cup shows that it is well differentiated into two regions upper photosynthetic region and inner storage region the structure of of both the zones is similar to that of the thallus mature gimme are found to be attached at the base of the gimma cup by a single cell stalk while the intermingle with gimme are many mucilage hairs each each gimme is autotrophic in nature multicellular bilaterally symmetrical means what the gimma having a cells are many more and they possesses a chlorophyll within it that's why they can develop their own food material and that's why called as a autotrophic in nature 
bilaterally symmetrical means what when we are taking a uh, when we are divide them at that time they are forming a two equal halves that's why they are bilaterally symmetrical it consists parenchymatous cells then oil cells and rhizoidal cell it notch into two sides in which it lies growing points called as a notch all the cells of a gyma contain chloroplast except rhizoidal cells and oil cell rhizoidal cells are colorless and large in size while oil cells are present just within the margins and contain oil bodies instead of chloroplast so this is the diagram a which shows presence of a main midrib and on that main midrib there is a presence of a gyma cup this is the part of a thallus tissue which possesses a single gyma cup uh, having a fringe margin this is the vertical section through the gyma cup showing photosynthetic region or photosynthetic zone then this one is the storage zone and these are the rhizoids and this one are the scales this is the complete single gyma which are found in a gyma cup cavity this one is the mature gyma which showing green cells oil cells chloroplast centrally placed notch which is a growing point and some specialized cells for the rhizoid development and at the base there is a single cell stalk so this is all about the gyma cup and gimme and here is the uh, development of a gyma cup so dissemination of a gimme mucilage hair secret mucilage on absorption of a water it swells up and press the gimme to get detached from the stalk in the gyma cup so in this way the gimme going to be detached from the stalk uh due to the swell up or the breakdown of a stalk cell uh, which uh, due to the pressure exerted by the growth of young neighboring gimme in this way gimma will be separated and disperse all over the distance by a water currents after that they are going to be germinate when after falling on a suitable substratum gimme going to be germinate the surface which comes in contact with the soil that becomes a ventral surface and the above surface is always facing towards the sunlight that is a vent dorsal surface the rhizoidal cells develop into rhizoid meanwhile the growing points in which lies two lateral notches from thalli in the opposite direction thus they form a single gimme to thalli are formed gimme which develop from the male thalli they can be develop male plants and the gimme from female thalli they develop female plant development in this way they are going to be develop into a new thallus the gimma develops from a single superficial cell it develops on the floor of the gimma cup means the surface of the gimma cup or a cavity of a gimma cup having a cells and within that cell single cell can be become a uh, gimma developing cell it is papillate called as a gimma gimma cell initial it divides by the transfer division from lower stalk cell and upper cell the lower cell forms the single cell stalk the upper cell further divides and by transfer division to form two cells both cells undergo similar division to form four cells these cells divide by vertical and horizontal division to form a plate like structure with two marginal notches is called as a gimma so all these developmental stages are showing over here in this way gimma are develop and germinate into a new plant body while 
Sometimes the thallus structure, thallus of a marchantia, become dead or decay on the older portion and um, disperse into a small small fragment. So that is the type of a vegetative reproduction called as a fragmentation. The thallus is dichotomously branched. The basal part of the thallus is look like a rod and disintegrate due to the due to the aging when this proce process reaches up to the place of a dichotomy the lobes of the thallus get separated the separate separation detach lobes and fragments develop into the independent thalli by apical growth so in this way the dead decay matter of a older portion fragment into a small small pieces and that small fragments also having capacity to develop into a new plant thallus this is the second type of a vegetative reproduction then come towards the third type that is a adventitious branches the adventitious branches develop from any part of the thallus or the ventral surface of the thallus are rarely form stalk and the disc of archegonium for in species like palmata which is reported by the kashyap in 1919 on being detached these branches develop into the new thalli so this is the type of a vegetative reproduction then come toward the sexual reproduction sexual reproduction in marcantia is done that is oogamous type within that all species are dioecious means male reproductive bodies are known as a anthridia and female reproductive body called as a archegonia anthridia and archegonia are produced on a special erect modified lateral branches of thallus called as a anthridiophore and archegoniophore further that growth the thallus is checked because growing point of the thallus is utilized in the form in the formation of these branches in some thalli like marcantia palmetti and marcantia polymorphum the abnormal receptacle bearing both anthridia and archegonia have also been have also been reported such bisexual receptacles are called as a androgynous receptacle so here is the transfer section through gametophore these are the anthridiophore which is having a pelted body with uh, which is complete unite and this is the archegoniophore that possesses a lobe structure So when we are taking transfer section through the anthridiophore and archegoniophore, at that time we can see internal structure. So internally, transfer section shows that differentiated into two sides, that is ventral side and dorsal side. Ventral side has two longitudinal toes with uh, scales and rhizoids. These grooves run longitudinally through entire length of the stalk. Dorsal side shows an internal differentiation of air chambers. These are the development of a anthridiophore and a internal structure of a anthridiophore when we are taking a transverse section. So this is the anthridia of a marcantia. This is a diagram A shows vertical or or longitudinal section passing through the disc of an anthridiophore. So this is the stalk of an anthridiophore, this is the disc of an anthridiophore and this is the mature anthridium. So all the details are found over here that is the air pore as like a stomata. This is the photosynthetic zone. These are the ostules means a small opening. These are the air chambers. These are the anthridial chamber within that there is a development of a androcyte mother cells which becomes later on anthrazoids the mature anthridium is 
which can be develop a biphylogenetic structure called as a anthrazoids so here is the complete developmental stages that is the thallus cells behave as like a anthradial mother cells and here is the complete development of a mature anthradium here are the spermatogenesis means the process of a metamorphosis of a androcyte mother cell into the anthrazoids called as a spermatogenesis and in this way this androcyte mother cell can be converted into a triangular triangular structure which is called as a androcyte and later on if they develop a flagella at that time they are called as a anthrazoids this is the development of a archegonium for which is also called as a carpocephalum and here are the some details which are developmental conditions here is the single cell which becomes a androgonial mother initial cell these are the first division and that cells behave as like a basal cell and outer cell then peripheral division then primary adaxial cells are developed due to that and later on primary cover cell and central coil cells are developed over there and in this way there is a development of a neck canal cell and winter canal cell and lastly here is the development of a complete mature archegonium with the egg this is the egg this one is the winter and this is the neck so each and every neck and winter are protected within a jacket like cell structure in this way there is a complete development of archegonium and mature archegonia are developed after the development of anthrazoids and mature archegonia there is a fertilization so in case of a marchensia it is a dioecious fertilization take place when male and female thalli grow near each other and there is a need of water for the fertilization neck of archegonium is directed upward and the dorsal surface of the uh, archegonium um, uh, develop into a small passage within that they, uh, they can secrete a mucilaginous mass in the mature archegonium winter canal and neck canal cell going to be disintegrate mean they are going to be dissolved and form a mucilaginous mass that absorb water that mucilage absorb water and after absorbing water they become swell up and come out of the archegonial mouth and by pushing the cover cell apart this mucilaginous mass consists of chemical substance the anthrazoids are splashed by the rain drops means they again absorb the water drops or rain drops and they may be fall on the nearby female receptacle or swim in the hole water and uh, and attached to the female receptacle it is only possible if the both male and female receptacles are surrounded by the water if there is absence of water at that time there is a no fertilization many anthrazoids enter the archegonial neck by chemotactic response and they reach up to the egg this mechanism is called as a fertilization called as a splash cup mechanism one of the anthrazoids penetrate the egg and the fertilization is effected or fertilization is done the fusion of both male and female nuclei result in the formation of a diploid zygote that is called as a oospores the fertilization ends up in the gametophytic phase so if there is a development of a zygote that is a gametophytic phase that is the end of the gametophytic phase and then there is a starting of a sporophytic phase at the sporophytic phase is a post fertilization changes and many more changes are going to be done over here that is after fertilization uh, 
stock of the archegonium 4 is going to be elongates re remarkable overgrowth take place in the central part of the disc and as a result of it this growth the marginal region of the disc bearing archegonia is pushed downward uh, or inward side the archegonia are now hanging towards the lower side with their neck and pointing downwards so the there is a development of a, a disc and the wall of the venter divides to form two to three layered calyptra so in this way many more changes are done within a post fertilization changes called as a sporophytic phase these are mentioned over here and this is the complete development of a sporangium after fertilization deployed zygotes or oospores enlarge and it completely fills the cavity of the archegonium it divides by transfer division that is a right angle to each other and then there is a second division again right angle to the first and result into the formation of four cell this represent quadrant stage and the cells are divided into epibasal cell and capsule cell hypobasal cells and then divided into a foot and seta since the capsule is developed from the epibasal cell and forms the apex of the sporangium the type of embryogeny is known as exoscopic in nature the next division is also ventricle vertical and it result in the formation of eight cell stage or octant stage now this division are irregular and globular embryo is formed the lower cell divide to form massive and bulbous food so this is the food seta and capsule structure of a sporangium so in this way there is a development of a sporangia these are the few stages of a sporophytic development successive stages are mentioned over here that is a sporogonium mature sporogonium spores tetrad so these are the spore tetrads and two elaters are developed over there so these are the two elaters in this way they are developed into a mature sporangium this mature sporangium possesses seta foot seta capsule then dispersal of spores this is done when seta elongates rapidly pushes the capsule in the air through the protective layers and ripen capsule wall descends from the apex to the middle by the four six irregular teeth or valves so this is the rupturing or the breaking of a seta and in this way the spores are going to be liberated in a atmosphere and this is the these are the some successive stages in the germination of a spores and development of a sporophyte in this way <coughs> in this way the spores are developed into a new thallus here is the some complete life cycle of a marcantia this is the diagrammatic representation of a asexual life cycle and here is the alternation of a generation of a marcantia that is marcantia is a dioecious plant which can reproduce by the vegetative reproduction that is adventitious branches then gimma formation and fragmentation so this is the asexual type of reproduction here is the gametophytic generation and this one is the sporophytic generation here is the development of a gametes and after the development of gamete there is a fertilization after fertilization or post fertilization is nothing but an sporophytic generation it ends up when there is a development of a spore mother cells and right from that meiosis there is again gametophytic generation going to be start so in this way it can be complete their life cycle 
This is the complete diagrammatic representation of a Marchensia. This is the female gametophyte or archegoniophore which is lobed archegoniophore and this is the male gametophyte which is the disc shape anthridiophore. These are the gema cups so possessing a gemi. This is the meiosis which is the starting point of a gametophytic generation and here is the development of a zygote that is the fertilization and from fertilization there is a starting of a sporophytic generation so in this way we uh, we have got a complete idea of a marchensia life cycle with many more stages so thank you for watching my video lecture